Today's video is all gonna be about impact, the moment of truth. How should you train impact and what are the differences from setup to impact? Make sure you check out this video. So what we're gonna be discussing is impact, as I mentioned there in the intro. First of all, what is the difference at impact compared to setup? Well, let's quickly go through those points, and that's what I was trying to feel in that sort of mini swing that I did, is a hard part to train. And that's why I'd actually break the movement down and actually hitting some shots from an impact position to feel what it's like is a really good idea in practice. So a couple of differences. My setup position, my pressure is pretty even from heel toe and very even from left right balance and lead foot to trail foot. I might be slightly favoring my lead foot here 55, 60%, but it's not crazy. And I'm about 50, 50 heel toe. So the first difference is that impact would like more pressure into that lead foot and more of it into the lead heel. So that was one feel I was trying to get was almost like us pushing down. And what helps me get it into the heel and this affects the second part here is my lead leg has straightened because my lead hip has rotated with some depth. So you would see from a downline camera that you'd almost start to see your left bum cheek because your hips are starting to rotate with that depth. So as I get that, I feel like this lead leg has straightened and the pressure feels like it's more into my lead heel. So that's a big difference from relatively even heel toe and left right balance to feeling a lot more into that lead heel, getting that sensation of the lead leg has extended and the lead hip has rotated with depth there. So it is further behind me. Now, because this side is straightening, extending, to get to the golf ball, I need my other side, my trail side, to move a little bit more downwards towards the golf ball. So as this side is rotating and extending, my trail side is actually going a little bit more down to the ball. I'm creating a little bit more side bend in here, a little bit more right side crunch for me as a right-handed golfer. So I'm almost trying to get that feeling that my trail shoulder has moved a little bit more down towards the golf ball. You would see it set up here, I may have a shoulder tilt of up to 10 degrees, whereas at impact, my shoulders are gonna be a lot more tilted than that. So this shoulder has moved more down and in front of me, my lead shoulder has moved more up and behind me. So I'm in a very different shoulder position. We'd expect a lot more tilt because this side's moving down, this side is moving up and rotating. So let me do that again. So I've got pressure into that lead heel, lead leg straightening and rotating that hip behind me. The compensation, because this side is extended, is for this side to move a little bit down towards the golf ball. And automatically as I do that, I want to feel like I actually get my handle a little bit more forward. So we'd like it impact our hands with a mid iron that we're discussing here. We'd like our handle to be a little bit forwards. Now I have filmed a video about the difference impact from an iron to a driver, so rather than discussing it today, I'll put a link just here that's well worth checking out after you view this, just talking about the differences from an iron to a driver, because I know that's a question I'll get. This knee, my trail knee has moved towards my lead knee. That's as a consequence to setting the pressure into that lead foot. This side has started to roll. We get a lot of golfers in that sort of movement or that sort of movement. They haven't really closed the gap between their thighs. So I'm really getting that feel of almost pinching the thighs together because I'm setting the pressure here. And again, I filmed a video talking about that move, just showing a different exercise that you can do to feel that. I'll put a, again a link just here, well worth checking out. So let's do one of those drills set up, impact. And all I'm trying to feel through impact is that I'm actually starting to now push off the floor. So I'm starting to really rise. So I'm here at impact, a little quarter swing. And I'm almost feeling like I'm starting to push off the ground. And it scares a lot of golfers, but the reality is the handle is moving up or should be moving up into impact, even though the club is still moving down. So it's in this sensation. We're not trying to move our handle down, 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 down to the golf ball, which we often see. 
you know, too steep a movement and then they, they potentially panic and start leaning back. And I'm just gonna do one more from there, push off the ground. That was probably the best strike of the bunch. Really got that sensation of starting to move around and up through impact. And that, they're the, what we really want to see. We really want to see this body rotating and rising through impact, not staying down and static, which we see with so many golfers where their body shuts down. Guess what happens? Hands take over. So if our body's not active enough, not moving in the right pattern, we tend to get very flippy with our hands, okay? So we're getting very active through impact. I am not suggesting there is no hands in the golf swing, but I want the big driving force, the engine, to be what the body is doing. And I really want you to focus on using those forces correctly. So we're rotating, and we're pushing off. So we're using those vertical forces and those rotational forces as much as we can. And I'd build up from there. As I said, it's a hard part. I wanted to discuss in this short video, how do you train impact? Well, really tough. And that's why actually doing some of those drills where I'm starting from impact, even just seeing it in the mirror, start to see what my body's like different. I could then get it on video in those little quarter swings, try and recreate some of those positions. Now I'm not trying to take those position to the golf course, I've got to take a feel to the golf course, but I've got to do those drills to know what that feels like. So there has to be some technical part to practice, but this is the real moment of truth. You could get away with funky movements here, but all really good players look very similar at impact. They've got a lot of these traits. How open should our body be? You know, that's a big part of it. Our lower half more than our upper half. And almost the more the better. But what we tend to see with elite golfers is their shoulders pretty square. Their torso, so if we go a little bit down to chest, slightly open. So for me as a right-handed golfer, rotated a little bit to the left, but not as much as the hips, the pelvis. So we tend to see tour average somewhere normally 20 to 45 degrees open with their hips, torso, no more, you know, half of it max. We probably only see 10, 15 degrees in terms of torso rotated. So we're not trying to get our shoulders, you know, massively or our torso massively open at impact. We, we can't really deliver in that position, but we're definitely getting that feel that we've turned our body and we're starting to use the ground push off. So I've done the quarter ones. I've built up that swing length. I'm now going to go for more of a full swing, but just trying to recreate some of those feels I got. Well, that felt very solid. I actually, and you may notice in my full swing, I lift my lead heel a little bit in the backswing. Why do I do that? I don't need it to create the turn for me. It actually helps um, my tempo, helps me get my lead hit behind me, helps me feel like I don't rush my backswing, and it actually helps me start my downswing is the main reason I do it. I almost try and get that feeling of pushing down, squashing that sort of tennis ball, if you like, under the lead heel, which you could Put a golf ball there if you're off turf. If you're on a mat, I'd probably use half a tennis ball just under that heel and just getting that feeling of squashing it. But let's finish with one last shot. As I said, I'm just trying to recreate the feels at impact. So it could be a good idea to feel that movement and then go ahead and actually just hit one. Annoyingly, that was the worst strike of the bunch but it was still down my target line, and you can see it hasn't lost me too much there. That is with a mid iron. As I said, I have filmed a video talking about the differences, iron to a driver, so check that one out as well. I will put the link in here. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to my channel. If you like the content, at least two instructional videos a week, hit the thumbs up, share with as many golfers as you can, and don't forget, to click here, because right now YouTube is suggesting the next video of mine that's relevant for you, just here, click on it and check it out.